Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, March the 5th, 2024. And we are seeing that Russia is coming up under uh, drone attacks uh, once again. This time, though, there was an alert sent out to the people in the country there. That's an oil refinery there that was hit by a drone inside of Russia there. Uh, most of these uh, drone attacks are happening right there near the border of Russia. Uh, not actually deeper inside because Ukraine is using the little small uh, unmanned UAVs to be able to carry out those attacks. Uh, according to the article here, Russia Air Defense has intercepted four plane type UAVs on Tuesday morning. The Defense Ministry reported three were taken out over Bel uh, Belogorod region, which is right down there near the border uh, of that area there. Let me just see if we can pop this up real quick on the maps. Um, and uh, that way I could kind of show you exactly where that's at right there. Anyway there, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's not really the best idea. That would actually be right up here on the top, uh, top right-hand corner of that particular map right there. So uh, without wasting time, let's continue on. Also on the uh, the Crimean Bridge, there was a loud explosion heard near the Crimean Bridge. Early reports have been said uh, no apparent damages has, has been done or reported that I could find anywhere. Uh, Charles Hodge was uh, uh, sent me a little tweet on that this morning. Uh, but Maria Zakharova was also speaking recently on our uh, RT covered about this particular attack. You know, we are now recording this interview, and right at this moment, the German ambassador to the Russian Federation is on Smolensk Square, where in fact he must answer questions about how to perceive what was heard on this audio recording, because Berlin is obliged to answer questions. What was presented to the world community speaks of the long-term and planned intention of Germany, a NATO country, to conduct a military operation against the Russian Federation. It literally told step by step how terrorist attacks against civilian infrastructure would be carried out, and the speakers clearly understood and had a full understanding of what they were discussing, the undermining of a civilian bridge. They also spoke specifically on this topic, saying that the bridge has a great political significance. You can listen to the rest of this. I'll put that in the description below. But besides that right there, too, uh, RT also releasing the audio One transcript of, was, uh, of these Russian uh, yeah. generals they and would, lieutenant uh, general, etc., yeah, speaking was, about that the situation for, uh, that was happening um, there, uh, yeah, in, or at least their conversation back, over uh, military much, actions that they yeah, would be taking inside the country. Uh, I will the also Biden include the link uh, to this particular uh, conversation that has been now released to you in the description below. So I guess I'll probably let that audio get a little bit too loud there. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, Jack uh, Texeria accepts a sentence over 16 years after admitting he released secret military documents on Russia. Uh, you know, that, that that's a... Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry, that did not... I did not, uh, I thought I was going to play that one clip of him, but it did not. Anyway, uh, this young man who is 22 years old uh, did leak uh, some military action plans over on the uh, platform called Discord. And uh, and so he ended up getting 16 years in a plea deal uh, for that. You know, that's, there's some things that are, uh, if you're going to become a whistleblower, that may be, uh, 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 you know, that could be worthwhile for, for really putting out there when really bad crimes are being done against humanity. Uh, and, uh, you know, but there's some things you got to be very careful about what you release. And I'm not weighing in on this particular case because I have not looked into his case uh, deeply enough as of yet. Uh, also, very disturbing, by the way, the images here. Yeah, this is just as a reminder, the situation that's going on in Gaza is definitely not letting up. There were uh, uh, more than a dozen bodies retrieved from the rubble that where Israel launched a bomb. There were children recently. I think it's 18 bodies in all. And um, that continues to, on, to, be con continues to uh, go on. Uh, also, Israel releasing, and I don't have it up here on the screen for you, but Israel 
uh, claiming that it was a stampede and people were trampled to death uh, when the aid came into Gaza. And I'm sure some people may have died from, uh, you know, the, 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 the desperation of that. But the fact still remains, Israel opened fire on this group of people that were trying to get aid. And, uh, and that's the reason there was this high death toll, not because the Palestinians trampling one, one another to death. But, you know, anytime you're trying to create... Um, Anytime you're trying to create that scenario, that's going to happen there. Uh, so, but anyway, it's very sad, though, to see continually child after child after child being drug out of the rubble. Well over, I think it's over 12,000 children have been killed to date thus far. That they have counted. That they have counted. How many more are still buried beneath the rubble? It is the greatest crime against humanity I have seen in modern times. And and truly, Netanyahu is like Herod the Great, just a cold-blooded child killer. I just tell you, just like it is. Uh, now this popped up as well, uh, sent to me by Charles there on his, from his Twitter there. Biden administration missed flying 320,000 migrants secretly into the U.S. to reduce the number of crossings at the border has national security vulnerabilities. Uh, well, the, the article does exist, and uh, we have here on the Washington Examiner 320,000 inadmissible illegal uh, immigrants into the U.S. cities. Efforts by an open border, Democrats to blame the growing big city migrant crisis on Texas and its program of busing illegal my immigrants north are being upstaged by a new investigation showing that President Joe Biden has secretly flown hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants from Latin America airports to 43 U.S. cities. I mean, I mean can you even imagine that? You don't, we don't need a border wall. When the president will take and go pick you up in the country where you are and just fly you in. I mean, if that's not being set up, for an overthrow of this nation. I don't know what is. I mean, that's like insane. Um, anyway, State of the Union address, I know that's coming up here on Thursday, uh, but in response to that, uh, it's kind of interesting because uh, uh, Alabama Senator uh, Katie Britt, uh, she has made an incredible, well, it's a first step, I should say. Won't be allowed to vote uh, if you do that. So let's let me take you back over to Katie Britt real quick here. Uh, what did I do? Did I lose my spot here and play that for you? Let's see. It got backwards on me. Here we go. Let's may end up going into a commercial again. If it does, we'll let the commercial play out. And then, uh, then we'll play that clip there that uh, that she did on Fox News. Here we go. Well, yeah, it's going to go to a commercial. While the commercial is playing there, let me by cut the volume down on that. Ah, okay, we can skip the ad. Great. Several Border Patrol chiefs say Biden's policies are actually incentivizing migrants, and we're seeing this now, to turn themselves in because they get released. Here with Reaction, Alabama Senator and Ranking Member of the Senate Appropriations Homeland Security Committee, uh, Katie Britt. Senator, welcome. Your reaction to what we're seeing in real time. Yes, I mean, you're showing Eagle Pass there. Griff is exactly right. And one thing that we're not pointing out in all of this is the economic impact of something like that. This is yet another prong of the failed Bidenomics. You know, that actual entry does about $34 billion a year in trade. Every day we have to shut that down, which we saw them have to do. It's about $100 million. This is the definition of America last. Our frustration here on the Hill is um, it is really just continuing to grow. We've been telling Democrats and we've been telling the White House for over three months now, in order for us to get this supplemental package together, we have to have real border security. The problem here is everything that we put forth that would actually secure and close the border, the Democrats don't want because the truth is they want an open border. All of their quote unquote solutions leave the border wide open, which means that it is the drug cartels, the terrorists and the human traffickers that will win. So, Senator, 
Senator Langford, who's negotiating for you guys, Republicans, says we're not going to be able to get this through by Thursday or Friday. We're still working through text. We're still looking at all the things we have to get done. And there's large areas that are unresolved. So no Ukraine aid, no Taiwan aid, no Israel aid, because there's no border. Uh, there's no changes to the border. We don't want more soft-sided tents. We need more yeah. border patrol, and we need a change in asylum rules and laws. Don't, doesn't the president see what we're seeing? Absolutely. This is a... Well, I'll include that into the link to, for the description below for you to be able to watch this entire uh, interview there. But what she did, Katie Britt actually put together a policy there to where illegal immigrants will not be allowed to vote. I think that already exists, but I could be wrong on that. But nonetheless, the whole issue on our southern border truly is a major mess. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. This is just kind of a highlight of the, some of the news things that I've been looking at uh, here recently and uh, watching very close the Middle East and the things happening in that region there. I'll be working with more intel uh, people that I know this week coming up to try to get a better idea of what we could expect. I do know that as the situation, um, the threat with Russia uh, and NATO rises, that is the tipping point for China to be able to go in after Indonesia and Taiwan, and of course later the Philippines. So they'll all be um, taking over the hegemony of that entire region. Then the Middle East will come into play. At least that's the kind of the way it's been shown that for me that it would take place. Uh, and, and one last thing playing on here, I thought that was kind of interesting was Biden himself shows up at one of these late night talk shows. Um, I think that's what it was there. Let me just see if this is it or not. Uh, and uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. Take a look at this. You got to take a look at the other guy. He's about as old as I am, but he can't remember his wife's name. Yeah. And, uh, it's about how old your ideas are. Look, I mean, this is a guy who wants to take us back. He wants to take us back on Roe v. Wade. He wants to take us back on a whole range of issues that are 50, 60 years. They've been solid American positions. You know, it really does give um, pause to make you wonder whether or not... Um, Do you enjoy playing... Whether or not age caps should be put on a presidential election because granted th there's people that are in great shape but even Ronald Reagan as he got older like that is and, and sitting in the White House you realize that the capacity to truly effectively run as a commander-in-chief is really n very slim to none and I realize Donald Trump is what 77 years old as well now, he's in pretty good condition for a 77-year-old. But uh, four years from now, when he's 81, will he still be in that good of condition? Or will he be a lot like Biden? Will dementia have set in or something of that nature there? So I, I think it would be a good idea that they put a cap, uh, at least for the running part, maybe up to, say, 70 or 72 or something like that. Uh, even 70 might be better, or 65 even, who knows? But it's just really, I realize the age sometimes comes with wisdom, but at the same token, you're also risking a great deal in other areas. I'm Steve Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live.